Hey guys, as you know, the roller coaster supports have been completed and the track is going on. Except for one minor thing. I redesigned the entire ride and had to rebuild all of it. This time I'll be going over what I changed, why I changed it, and everything allowing me to change it. The real problem became apparent when I was trying to design the ride's track. Since the track is prefabricated, I needed to have enough data points to map and draw the curves of the track rails. Simply put, I didn't have enough information from the original design files. But wait, it gets worse. In order to create more data points for the ride, I had to recreate the ride by programming. My first attempt was using Python, but I quickly switched to using MATLAB, but there was just one problem. The problem is, I haven't really programmed anything in my life. After spending a few weeks working on Python, I got comfortable enough to generate a few automation programs, but the math was lacking, so an old colleague of mine recommended I use MATLAB. MATLAB proved to be pretty simple to write various programs, and it produced results I could use with my modeling programs. Now the next issue. The ride is comprised of over 300 different parts ranging from the supports to the chain drive, and Fusion 360, the program I was modeling the ride with, didn't seem to like the complexity. Enter Elibre Design, except their sketch environment and lack of spline mapping is shit. So, Autodesk Inventor it is. Inventor is the program I've used professionally and can handle large assemblies with ease. With Inventor, there are machining add-ins that have the same functionality as Fusion 360. But yet another problem. Inventor doesn't come installed with a spline interpolation tool, but it does have an Excel point importing function. This means I had to learn some Visual Basic to write a command for spline interpolation, or borrow one from the internet and adjust it a little. Once I set up all the different programs to help me create some more data points for the rides track, I reached the biggest problem of all. The calculations are so good that none of the center lines actually match up with the existing structure. So this means I have to remake everything that I have previously created, remachine it, and put it all together. I know I just went over four months of information in about a minute, but if you want to know more of what I do behind the scenes and how to do it yourself one day, then check out the Roller Coaster Project on Patreon. You'll get extra videos, live sessions, and be a part of the coaster community. So search patreon.com slash the roller coaster project. Now that everything is having to be remade, I use this time to clean up some design errors and improve a few things that I noticed were lacking in the original design. One of the biggest issues I had with the initial design was my attempt to press fit the ride supports into the foundation board. Since the CNC I'm using is a hobby machine, I ended up with ride supports that were slightly out of my intended tolerance. The real problem came to when I was pressing the pre-made supports into the pocketed holes on the foundation board. They were a little too tight, and I broke many of them. With the supports out of spec, I accidentally broke a few of them, and some of them didn't press fully, resulting in a skewed support structure. So how did I fix this? To solve this problem, I created foundation pedestals. For concept, these are simply 3D printed using my Ender Pro. For the final product, I'll be creating a mold and casting hundreds of them with urethane resin. With the structure now resting on circular foundation pedestals, I had to remill the square pockets of the original foundation board into circular ones. My goal is to use the same board as before to save some material. With the foundation fixed and the pedestals made, I moved on to cutting out the new supports, which represented the updated center line. Each segment of the center line is comprised of no less than 75 points, resulting in a change of less than one millimeter of arc length separation. Yeah, it's a bit much. One thing that's different this time around than the last time is how I'm holding the material down to cut it out. I spent a few weeks creating a vacuum table to hold down the thin sheet lumber and plastic, which speeds up my workflow and allows me to maximize the use of my material. The previous supports were cut out using double-sided tape and some extra screws. Amateur hour. Now let's see how this all comes together. <sighs> Again. Another ride part that's going to have to be reproduced many times are the track retaining brackets. Originally I was milling these parts out of plastic, then finishing them with 
the drill press by drilling the alignment hole that mounts to the track. That took nearly two hours to produce. Going forward, I will be making another mold to cast these parts since they're gonna be repeated hundreds of times. Since machining can be a little boring, in the future most of the footage along with the design programming will be available on the Patreon channel. Since this track is prefabricated, it's very similar to that of a steel roller coaster. Using all of the data points and another design program I created, I could produce exact locations for each rail. And once the rail locations were tabulated, I used Inventor to import the points and connect them with my spline program. With all of the ride sections imported, I broke up the massive curves into defined ride track sections, trying to keep everything six inches in length. Originally, there were 23 track sections for the ride, and each section has a right and left rail. With each section defined, I implemented the sweep and loft features in Inventor to produce the track rails. But there are a few things missing. In order to accurately mount the track sections on their respective supports, I needed to add some defined through holes that correspond to the track retaining brackets. Using these holes, I can secure the track sections to the ride structure with some 3 64ths self-tapping screws. Because the plastic track material is so soft, the tapping screws form a small thread in the plastic. The resulting section becomes extremely rigid. I chose to make the track a two-part operation consisting of a rectangular base and a flat strip running section. The reason I did this is due to the ease of fabrication and potential for bending of the track segments for fit. It took a while, but now that the track sections are complete, there's only one thing left to do. You want to say some cool I happened to change a few things for the track due to some issues with the HDPE not aligning to the ride's curves. So the plastic track is now made of a softer plastic along with a reduced amount of sections to maintain end tangency. So what's next? With the track and structure complete, next I'll be focusing on the cars. Once the cars are complete, I'll be adding the chain lift, ride motor, and ride brakes. Hopefully this won't take another few months. Be sure to follow along on social media, the website, all at The Roller Coaster Project and therollercoasterproject.com. And if you want a deeper look at The Roller Coaster Project, check out the Patreon. You'll get a lot of bonus content. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.